So welcome to The Diplomat with Stephen Taylor. Thank you very much for taking out the time and joining us today. So today it's an honor to have the ambassador of Morocco in South Africa, uh, Yusuf Amrani. Uh, ambassador, thank you very much for taking the time out to join us today. Well, uh, thank you, Stephen. I'm very happy to be in your show. I saw your different shows and uh, you tackle very important issue. And uh, I am happy to be with your guest today. Thank you. So before we get into more about Morocco and South Africa, tell us about you and where you were born in Morocco. Well, I was born in uh, the extreme north of, of the, the, the continent in Tangiers, a beautiful city looking over the Mediterranean and the Atlantic and only 14 kilometers from Spain, from, the, from Europe. So you understand the, that I was born in a multicultural uh, city uh, with the, uh, uh, with the uh, tradition, but also modernity. Okay. And tell us about uh, when did you arrive in South Africa as the ambassador? Well, uh, 22 months ago, I uh, was appointed by His Majesty as uh, ambassador of Morocco to South Africa uh, because there was a decision at the highest level of our two countries to fix the relation and to appoint high level ambassadors to uh, move forward in the building up of uh, uh, strong relations between our two countries. And what is your role? What is your mission as the ambassador of Morocco in South Africa? You know, uh, Stephen, as, as I was telling you uh, before, Morocco and South Africa are today widely recognized as major actors and players in the continent and beyond. And uh, this uh, recognition of the importance of the two countries goes hand in hand with an important number of duties, challenges, but also opportunities. So as I was saying earlier, our two countries agreed to work together to build up a partnership and uh, closer ties in order to uh, building uh, up a prosperous, uh, secure and uh, forward-looking Africa. So my mission, and to be, I, I know that you, I know that you like people to, to be straightforward. My mission sure. in South Africa is therefore driven by three ambitions or three pillars, okay? I have a clear mandate and a very clear objective, which are built on trust between our two, uh, two countries. And in three, my action is, uh, is in three dimensions. The first dimension is the uh, strengthening of our political dialogue, both at the bilateral level and also at the level of the African Union. Today, one has to admit that Africa is facing a lot of challenges and the African Union, which our organization needs commitment, needs coherence, and most of all needs unity. And business as usual is not anymore an option. So there is no, there is no room for ideologies anymore. My second dimension of, the action, action, of my action is the increase, increasing of export capacity and support of direct investment flows. Morocco have a, a, a good experience. We have a Salam and Salam has inv invested a lot in Morocco, one than uh, 1.05 billion dollars and other institution. And last week, and this is about your, your city, Cape Town, last, last, last week, Morocco and South Africa have signed two agreements, important, MOUs between the Casablanca Finance City Authority and the South African Agency WISGRO. They were signed only last uh, Friday um, uh, to promote investment opportunities in Morocco and South Africa. And also, I, uh, uh, the, there was another instrument which was signed between uh, the Chamber of Commerce of Agadir, which is an important city, it's our Western Cape for agriculture, and the Chamber of Commerce of, uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, Cape Town. So personally, as ambassador, I'm very much delighted. Uh, of course, I warmly welcome this initiative, which carry, carries in its essence, the values and ambitions of our, uh, of our two countries, but also of Africa, 
which should shape the future and uh, uh, reinforce our economic uh, cooperation. These are, and the third dimension of my, uh, of my action is the promotion of people to people relations by deepening exchanges in the areas of culture, education, tourism, food security, climate change, energy, and tourism. And I know that you have a very interesting project. You, you, you talked to me about it during the next, if I understand the next Cape, uh, 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 film festival of Cape Town to organize sure. something around Morocco. This, I think, this is of, of great interest in Morocco. And I think we should work on this direction. I look forward to that. I look forward to engaging you on that. And well done on what you've achieved in Cape Town. That, that's amazing and the hot of the press. Wow, I'm excited about that, Ambassador. Thank you. It's a, it, is a, it, is a, it is a breakthrough. Yes, it is. Absolutely. And tell me, what are the main reasons behind publishing uh, the booklet uh, on the Sahara issue in South Africa? Did you write yeah. that yourself? Yes. Uh, I am going to be honest and straightforward. Around the Sahara issue, there is a lot of speculation, mysteries, and ideologies that are misleading public opinions. And you are journalists, and you know sometimes one uh, about the fake news. So I have come to realize that fake news are way too often affecting people's understanding the Sahara issue. I have deeply uh, considered, and my team in the emb embassy, that the facts must come out. And this book is, uh, I, I handed to you a copy last week. This book is yeah. that fact sheet. It is very simple, clear, and easy to read. So throughout this booklet, I tackle some of the most common misconceptions regarding this important issue from Morocco. I try to, to explain the roots, the dynamics, and prospects of the issue. And of course, I did emphasize on the historical, on the legal aspect to explain why, for example, we cannot refer to the Sahara as a colony, why the referendum is not a valid option anymore, and how the UN-led process deals with this issue. You know, uh, Morocco has always been consistent in promoting a legal based order. We believe that clarity and coherence are of a paramount importance and should always be uh, respected when dealing with uh, this kind of matters on the international level. So uh, this was the objective of uh, publishing this book. And uh, on the Sahara issue, I want to say that uh, uh, this means that uh, we should endorse the UN wording, promote the UN-led process, and create the favorable context to enable this process to move forward. We have to explain, we have to clarify our positions. And this is, I think, uh, one, uh, one of the aspects of my missions here in South Africa. According to your long experience in politics and diplomacy, what is the way, in your opinion, into a final settlement of the region, the regional disputes over the Sahara? Well, the UN Security Council is today the only body mandated to deal with this regional dispute over the Moroccan Sahara. The UN has defined clear parameters for the way forward. The, the language of the UN is therefore that of international legality and advocates for political solution that is realistic, pragmatic, sustainable, and based on compromise. And all these parameters, which I just mentioned, are fully reflected in the autonomy plan that Morocco presented as a contribution to, 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 to solve this issue. And I want to recall, uh, Stephen, as you invited me, that in 2008, Mr. Peter Van Vansen, who was the special envoy of the UN Secretary General, explicitly stated that the independent Sahara is not an achievable objective. Even late Secretary General Kofi Annan uh, uh, said that the referendum is not any, any option to solve this issue. So since, uh, and I give you, I'll leave you with these uh, figures. Since 2007, the 17 resolutions of the UN Security Council have all supported the Moroccan approach, the preeminence of the uh, initiative. And uh, uh, in addition, and I would like to say two more things, if you allow me, if we have time. Yes. That uh, uh, to, in addition to this UN dynamic, 
we acknowledge every day a greater number of countries around the globe that are no longer taking half measures to formally recognize that uh, the full and complete sovereignty of Morocco of its Sahara. And this through the opening of uh, more than 20 consulates uh, in Dakhla and Layoun from brotherly and uh, sisters country and the American proclamation and others initiative in the region. Let's, let's be honest, Polisario will not exist without Algeria and its support. And as you know, Algeria is fully involved in the Sahara issue. Today, there is a UN process that we should all support and that we should move forward. And we need to ask simple questions. One, who hampers this process from moving forward? Who complicates the appointment of UN envoy on the Sahara issue? Is Algeria playing with good faith its role as a party to the conflict? Of course, this, the answers to this important question will certainly help us to overcome this deadlock and bring hope to our region. I don't want to, I wanted to be very clear and straightforward to explain to you this very important issue. No, thank you, Ambassador. And talking about other African countries and your role in Africa, what motivated Morocco to return to the African Union? Well, uh, uh, Mor Mor African Union is our continent. Morocco has, has always been an active uh, player in the African continent. We, we're, not, we're not African only by geography. We are, we are African by our history, by our uh, uh, links, spiritual links with African countries. And we believe that country, Africa is a continent that, will, that should work for the young generation to respond to the... the so uh, we uh, join our efforts with other African brothers and sisters countries to build up a safe, secure, and stable Africa. And this could not be done only by ideologies, by slogans, or by words. We need to, to work together, to sit together, to plan together, because you have a lot of challenges. And COVID-19, uh, I think it was an opportunity, is an opportunity for us to work and to build up. So of course, we came back to join our efforts uh, to build up a safe, and like President Ramaphosa said, always says, we need to build up uh, a prosperous and audacious Africa, and also insist uh, uh, how we should uh, transform our shared inspiration into, into a concrete regional, sub-regional dynamic that lead to economic integration, sustainable, uh, stability and security, as well as uh, shared prosperity. But you know, something amazing that I didn't know that we that I think Africa and South Africa countries can learn from is that COVID-19 has affected not only Africa, not only Morocco, not only South Africa, but around the world. But something amazing that, that Morocco has done is that you've managed to vaccinate over 6 million of your population. How yes. can South Africa and Africa learn from Morocco? Well, we don't want to, to, to give lessons to anyone, but we want to share our modest experience. I think we, today we have uh, 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 vaccinated more than 5 million Moroccans, and we have uh, administered more than 8 uh, million doses. It's important because you have also Moroccans who have been uh, uh, vaccinated for the uh, second time. So the secret behind this is anticipation, clear sightness, and commitment. And these are the first, key, the, the first keys that might explain Moroccan's success. There was a leadership of the King, His Majesty King Mohammed VI. From the early stages of COVID-19, he adopted major responses, uh, ambitious plan to fight against the spread of the virus and to cope with the economic and social impact. So Morocco started very the vaccination campaign on January 28th, important. And we antici anticipated before, pre as I was saying earlier, presently the country has managed to vaccinate over four and, well, 5 million Moroccans. 
and eight million doses for people. But the, 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 the success of the Moroccan vaccination campaign can also be explained from a logistical point of view. 3,000 vaccination centers have been set up, 50%, which are rural areas. So in other words, Morocco places the citizen as a top priority and spares no effort to protect its people and has our humanity from a virus that proliferates around the world, regardless of our national peculiarities. So today we have to work together again because the virus doesn't, virus doesn't, doesn't care about the frontiers, doesn't need a visa or yeah. anything to move. So that's why we need to, to act together to be able to face this uh, difficult situation. I absolutely agree. And I see that uh, many people speak about the United States, about uh, the UK, but well done to Morocco. You guys have done well in, uh, in doing the vaccination rollouts. And uh, I must commend you from that. And I think South Africa and other African countries can definitely learn from you. And we should be we should be speaking more about that, appraising our African countries that are doing good because we all need each other's help. We do. Yeah, exactly. We need to work to be to work at the level of the African Union, but also yeah. to, live, to, to, to work together internationally. Of course, the world has changed. The world has changed today. And we need, you know, we need to, to do something in order to face these challenges. Uh, uh, as I was telling you, I'm the diplomats will have a new role to play in the future and, and, and yes. on the post COVID. We need to build up our economies. We need to uh, fix our, our regional integration scheme and we should work uh, as far as Africans are concerned about uh, what I called the, uh, Africa, uh, the, uh, Africa of health. We need to, to, to address really seriously these issues because it will, uh, it will be uh, added value for our common action as Africans. So once, once COVID is kind of over, the borders start to open again, uh, why should somebody from South Africa want to visit Morocco? Would they, what would they be going to see in Morocco? Why should well, they go? Morocco, uh, Morocco is a beautiful country. Marrakesh, Casablanca, <laughs> Fez, Tangiers, Dakhla. Morocco is one of the most beautiful and the safest countries to visit. The kingdom has recently been listed in the top of the five safest travel destination. Of course, wow. Morocco's success in maintaining this uh, uh, breakthrough vaccination campaign will also likely have a positive impact on tourism sector. I think in, in South Africa, you, tourism is very important for you. And that's why yes. vaccination uh, could help you to open the borders and to attract more tourists because you have a beautiful country. I was yes. in your city. A few, few, few weeks ago, I enjoyed uh, traveling and driving myself in the roads from Stellenbosch to, uh, to Francher to Cape Town. You have a beautiful country and it is attractive for tourism. Of course, we Moroccans are also we travel a lot. We are also uh, 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 like to come to see your country and to travel in your country. And Morocco, being a rich country in culture and history, is a is a home of numerous historical towns, uh, beautiful styles of architecture, uh, lovely markets, selling all kinds of, of spices and products, but also very exquisite cuisine, which is uh, now uh, very, uh, uh, very appreciated all over the world. So uh, there is something that you, you can, uh, I, will, I take this opportunity to, uh, Stefan, to invite you to come to Morocco, to breathe, to take uh, outdoor experiences and uh, easy access to the Mediterranean, to the Atlantic, to the Sahara Desert, to our architecture. And we are very uh, welcoming people and, uh, and we will do all what we can to, uh, to, to, to facilitate the promotion of tourism in our tolerant society with warm and welcoming people. Wow. Well, once the borders open and things get back to normal, then I definitely will take you up on your invite to come and visit Morocco. No, you are course. definitely invited. And uh, I, uh, I would like to use uh, uh, your show, which is uh, 
I like your show very much, very much to invite all South Africans to come to Morocco, but also I am working with my team in the embassy to uh, try to reopen the direct line Royal Emirate from Casablanca to Johannesburg and why not to Cape Town? Oh, wow. That would be great. That would be great, Ambassador. I hope that you can get that right. <laughs> and I hope we will talk about this during the, 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 our presence in, the, uh, in the, what you are organizing in Cape Town during the, the One People International Film Festival. Film Festival. Yeah. We look forward to having you at the Ambassador. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. I was very happy to be with you in your show. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you, Ambassador uh, Yusuf Amrani, the Ambassador of Morocco in South Africa. Thank you for your time. And thank you. For, I've learned a lot about your country and I definitely will be coming to visit very, very soon. Okay, you're most welcome, Stephen. Thank you. All the best, Ambassador. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.